every morning as uh, my, my son has to go to school really early, so I take him out to Great Valley Middle. Uh, if you've ever been out there, it's on Phoenixville Pike, which is a really busy road. There's no traffic light. And so, you know, you're trying to get across two lanes of traffic. They're coming both directions. Uh, there's people turning into the driveway. And the first time I dropped him off, I thought, I am going to be here forever. I, I'm just, I'm never going to get back home. I'm just going to be stuck here waiting because no one would let me in. And then suddenly, somebody stopped. They stopped on the right side and somebody coming up on the left stopped. And I thought, I thought I won the lottery. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Maybe divine intervention. Now I can, you know, I don't have to gun it and, and try to, you know, risk wrecking my car to get, just to get home. See, and that's the good part, though. Because uh, somebody caught me, you know, cut me a break and I got out there into traffic. But for those of you that don't know, the high school is right next door. So... A minute ago, somebody let me out, and now I'm faced with the awkward decision of whether I'm going to let somebody from the high school out into traffic. See, it's on me now. And, I was, and I'm appalled sometimes at what runs through my mind. I'm driving down, and I'm like, boy, I'm just way too busy. Right? A minute ago, 50 feet back, somebody else stopped and let me in. And I can't do that for someone else because I'm too busy. And this week it really hit home because I'm because I'm because I'm, I'm reading this text. I'm studying this text. I'm trying to you know get something out of this text where God is saying to forgive as we've been forgiven. And so going by that high school was way different this week because it was like okay, practice what you preach, brother. Right, preacher? Are you going to do that? See, th this whole series up to this point has been pretty comforting for us. Now I'm going to say the, com the comfort is getting pulled off this morning, maybe a little bit. Because the first three weeks, we had, we had these choices, right? This is, comes from Pete Wilson's book, Let Hope In, and he gives us four choices. We went through the first three, and they're pretty personal. It's, it's all about, like, how are we going to deal with our past? Are we going to transform that past, give that to God, and say, you know what? Whatever happened, it, it's, it's done. Uh, I'm not going to sweep it under the rug, but I'm going to just know that it's forgiven. Know that God's with me in my presence. That was week number one. Week number two, we talked about our sin. And instead of hiding it and smiling and saying, hey, I'm okay, to admit that I'm not okay and that I need God. And that when I confess, he's faithful, he's just, he'll forgive my sins. So am I going to live that way? So the choice to do that. And then last week, we talked about the choice to trust God and not act like my life is a never-ending tryout for God's team. Where if I just do enough and I'm good enough, then maybe he'll love me and maybe he'll accept me as one of his own. The truth is, he has already accepted us. Jesus already died for us. We are, we're already in because of him. Okay, so those are the choices to live that way. Now, you could have taken those choices and be like, all right, that's nice, Pastor. That's cool. And maybe you embrace them. And maybe it helps you. But see, but here is as my... Uh, New friends from Captive Free uh, used. I'm going to borrow this from you guys the other day. Uh, now is the so what and the now what. Okay? We had the what's what. Was it, what was it called? What's what? Uh, you know, okay, we, we, we understand. Forgiveness, we're love, but what are we going to do with it? Do we have a right or should we kink the hose when it comes to God's forgiveness? Do we just say, no, 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 no. I'm like the soup Nazi in Seinfeld. Not for you. No grace for you. No mercy for you. I mean, is, is that how we want to be? Is that how we want to live our lives? So, so Pete Wilson gives us our fourth choice today, which is the choice to, we can either hurt people who have hurt us, or we can set them free. <coughs> we, can, we can show the forgiveness that we've been given. Uh, so let's take a look at our text. Matthew 18. Uh, Greg, if you have a Bible, uh, you can open up to that. Uh, if you have it on your phone, that's cool. I won't think you're texting. Uh, you could be, but I'll... Give the honor system on that one. Uh, but there's also black hardbacks in your pew. Matthew 18. This comes from a, uh, a statement from Peter. A question, actually. He says, Lord, okay, how many times somebody sins against me? Somebody keeps causing problems for me and sinning against me. How many times should I forgive them? How about seven times? Now, now Peter's expecting, you know, uh, Jesus to high five him and say, man, you are just amazing. What a picture of discipleship you are. You are so mature in your faith, Peter. Seven times. Most people would, would kind of think you were doing great if you did three times if you forgave somebody. But 
Peter's being overtly generous seven times. Jesus says, he says, no, uh, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. What Jesus is saying to Peter is that, could, is it really forgiveness if I put a number on it? I mean, really, think about it. Think about the person you love the most coming up to you and saying, you know what? You can mess with me. You can fail me. You can hurt me seven times. Eighth time, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> Does that feel like love? I mean, really? I mean, can you feel the warmth in that statement? I mean, that, that's ridiculous. No one would do that, but that's what Peter's doing. He said, can I put a cap on it, Jesus? Can I really? He said, that, that's just not the way God works. That's not the way the kingdom of God works. It's not the way we do things as people of God. It's not like I'll be forgiven by God and embrace that and let him you know, shower his love on me. In other words, just like with me and the car thing, it's like, yeah, I, I love when people let me in. But it's a little more difficult for me to let them in. Because that's going to inconvenience me. That's not necessarily going to benefit me. That's going to take time. People behind me are going to get real angry. Like, what, why is this guy stopping? But it's going to shine a light. And it might just make somebody's day. Just a little bit better. Okay, so Jesus says, okay, he says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. He, he wants to give Peter and, and all of us a picture of what this thing looks like and how it's supposed to work. Okay, so he uses, as an example, a king, right? This is a guy who holds all the cards. Very important for us to see that. Uh, he is the one who makes life and death decisions for the people in his kingdom. So he's the one who has everything uh, and, and, right, and all the bargaining chips. Now, there's a guy who's brought before him who owes him a lot of money. It says in the, in the text that it's 10,000 talents. Uh, just say, just concise, suffice to say, say that it's a lot of zeros at the end of that debt. He cannot pay it. There is no way. It's millions of, like, or maybe gazillion dollars. I mean, it's not going to. So what's going to happen is the king, the king's got a reputation. Uh, and, and he was supposed to pay that back. Uh, the king wants it now. The guy can't pay it. So he orders, and, and it's important for us to see this in the text, that him, his wife, and his kids, and everything that he had is sold to repay the debt. I don't know if we appreciate the weight that this guy was feeling. That I want you to just feel that weight right now. To lose everything. You would freak out now at the thought of losing your house, wouldn't you? Even your car. The big screen TV in the living room, if that thing goes, right? If someone were to take that from you, you'd be pretty upset. But imagine everything. The car's gone. The house is gone. The job's gone. Your life's gone. You have no more freedom. You're, and it doesn't just affect you because your wife is gone. She's sold. She's somebody else's possession. Your kids, they're gone. They're someone else's possession. You have just lost it all. And you're facing that. And that is like, I don't know about you, but that's that gazillion pound weight Monty Python that falls on the guys. Boom. Done. Squashed. So what does he do? He, he, he's, he's in front of the guy who holds everything. He, he has no recourse. There's no way for him to go. So see, that's the only thing that he can do. He falls on his knees and he begs. Be patient with me. I'll pay back everything. You know, and, and I don't know. Jesus doesn't say, but I think the king of the story probably smiled a little bit. Like, really? You're going to pay that back? I, I don't think so. It, it's impossible. So what he does is he takes pity on him and he cancels the debt and he lets him go. We need to see he doesn't lower the debt. He doesn't say, oh, I'll cut you a little bit of a break or give you a lower interest rate or something like that. He doesn't send him home with a coupon book and, and, and a fee schedule. He, he says, it's done. There's no more debt. You went from losing everything to gaining everything. And, and let's look at this. He, he leaves with far more than he walked in with. He leaves with everything restored in his life. And, 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 and even more than that, the weight of that debt is gone. It's, it's not like gone. It's gone. Cancel. When the king cancels it, it's done. Because he has, there, no, there's no one higher up the chain. You know what I'm saying? That's what God wants to do. There's no one higher up the chain. Than him when it comes to our forgiveness. 
He wants us to see that. He wants to see that we have this enormous debt that we could never pay. But that he already paid every single bit of that. He canceled the debt and he lets us go. He lets us go. Even though we've hurt him, even though we've failed him, even though we have ignored him, you know, in much of our lives, even as Christians, even as believers, I'm not just talking about pre-conversion. I'm talking about like, like in, in the middle of, of, our, of our life in Christ. Sometimes we just live like he don't exist. Pardon my bad grammar. It just flew out. I don't know. The jersey, jersey is flying out. On that one. But, but it's, it's forgiven. And the one at the top says, says that you are loved. The one at the top says you're free. You're free. Now, again, we love that. And I wish the story stopped. Wouldn't it be awesome? I'd be like, all right, Matthew, could we, just, could we have just left that other little part out about what he has to do with it? Because Jesus, is, is, he wants to talk about caps on our forgiveness. And he says, okay, so, so here's what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't go fresh from being forgiven, right? Like church. Hearing that you're forgiven, embracing that, and then go out and somebody does something rather small to you. Like maybe they cut you off uh, down the road a little ways. You're trying to get into the pepper mill, right? You want to get your uh, Philly cheese steak. And somebody's like, oh, man, you're in my spot. Right? And, and, and I'm going to read it in the riot act. And it's like, really? I have to, I have to check myself. I go home and, and, you know, and one of the kids might, might do something and it's like, really? I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to take, take, go to war with that? After what I just experienced, after what I was just reminded of, because this servant finds a guy who owes him like five bucks. This guy owes him a very payable debt. It's, it's, it's a repeat scenario. Pay back what you owe me. He does the same thing as the, as the king had done initially. Grabs him, starts to choke him. Pay back what you owe him. In fact, he's even more violent than the king was. And think about this. This is the guy who has very little power. The guy at the top was way more gentle with him. I mean, he takes the gloves off, he, he goes for broke, and, and, he ha- and the guy does the same thing that he had just done, begging on his knees, be patient, I'll pay you back. And the big difference here is this guy can pay it back. Probably has it in his wallet at home or something. I'm getting paid Friday, man, I'll take care of you. I'll give you the five, ten bucks, whatever I owe you, don't worry about it. And he's like, no. Has him thrown into prison until he, can, until he can pay back the debt. Now, now what, what's shocking is, is that the rest of the people in the kingdom see what happens. The fellow servants are like, what's, this isn't how we do this. And I think in the parable, I think it's implied that, you know, the, the, these other servants who are so shocked and appalled at this behavior, it, they're, they're shocked and appalled because look at who their king is. He, he, he does this all the time. He, he forgives people. He's loving. And we're the people who follow his lead. And so, and so we're going to kink the hose and we're going we're gonna to say no to, to, to showing mercy and showing love to other people. It's, it's not the way it's supposed to be. So the master gets wind of it, calls him in. Hey, I canceled that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And he turns him over to the jailers so that he could be tortured until he pays back what he owes. And he says, this is how your heavenly father, uh, Jesus, brings it down into reality. Uh, and it goes from being a story uh, to saying, hey, guys, you see yourself in the story as forgiven. And, and, and how are you doing as far as giving that forgiveness to other people in your life? Because if that's the way you want it, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, if you want it, as, as far as payback, as far as revenge, if you want to live your life that way, okay. Well, that's the way we'll do this. See, because we, we want the freedom in Christ. We want him to, to, to set us free and to cut us a break every time. But when it comes to other people, and I'm going to get a little more uncomfortable. Uh, how about people who you look at outside the church? Oh, Right? Who, who, whose lives are a mess? The, the kid that's on, that's on drugs. The, right? and, and that family. You, you know what I'm talking about? And we just go, oh. God, God's grace is for them. They need it. They need it. And guess what? We 
get to be. And I, want, I don't want this to be, oh man, I'm in trouble because I don't forgive. Let's just face it, people. We don't like to forgive sometimes. Jesus is not saying that, that this is how God's going to teach you unless you're like totally cheerful about forgiving every single situation. He's not saying that. It's difficult to forgive sometimes. We would rather have revenge on somebody almost all the time. That's so much easier. Writing people up, it's so much easier. It's much more difficult to hang with them, isn't it? To get into the mess of it. But guess what? We get to bring the, the light of Jesus. We get to bring his grace. We get to bring his mercy. We get to, to, to bring forgiveness to those situations. Because you know what revenge gets you? Uh, somebody once told me that um, revenge is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Did you hear that? When I'm about revenge, I am, I am drinking poison and I'm expecting the other person who hurt me to die. How ridiculous is that? But that's what we do. I'll show them. How many of us are living our lives in an I'll show them? High school kids, all those people, right? They gave me all those swirlies and all that stuff when I was in high school. I'll show them. They picked on me. They looked down on me. Look, right? How many people, how many of you went to your high school reunion going, I'm going to show them all what I made of myself? What is that? In Christ, what is that? That's not the life. See, and what I want to see, that's not the life that he wants for us. He wants us to have the freedom that that guy had when he walked out of that office of the king, forgiven and loved. He wants us to walk out of here today, forgiven and free and knowing that we are loved by God and that we can see every day, every moment, and you're going to have them. This whole week is going to be filled with opportunities to show the love of Jesus to people. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be people who, who don't deserve it. Okay? Because I'll be one of them, probably. Undeserving of his love. Undeserving of his grace. But you will have an opportunity to show that to them. To say, yes, you are forgiven. Yes, you're broken. And I, and I want to hang in there with you as you struggle and as you go through that. Because for me, what it boils down to, and this is the real choice behind the, the, the choice we had, the choice to, to set people free or, or to hurt them. It's to realize, what, what, do you want, what, what do you want your life to be? Do you want your life to be a rant? Or do you want your life to be a sermon? Think about it. It could be a rant about, about what everyone's done to me, and, and, I, and I could do that. I can go through life about what's wrong and how other people have hurt me and they've let me down and we've done that. Or it could be a sermon. Or I confront the things that happen. Or I can be honest with those things. So that I can bring the love of Jesus to those things, to those people. Because I don't know about you, but uh, in some small way, when that person lets me out, you know, and it might seem weird. But it's like the coolest thing in the world. Because I could sit there all day. But when that person lets me out, I mean, they may not know it, but they're, they're showing me love. They don't even know me. They don't know how I'm going to return the favor if I will. So I pray that we would see in, in, in the rest of today and, and tomorrow and in the rest of our lives opportunities to experience the love of Jesus again, to know that we're forgiven, to know. That's what he wants us to pull out of, is that we are forgiven. And that we get to forgive the people in our lives. People we love and strangers alike. So let us pray. Father, we thank you. You have forgiven us a, a, a debt we could never, ever think about repaying. We don't deserve anything but to be cut off from you for eternity. You did the most amazing thing and you gave us life. Your son's life in our place. So that we could have hope, so we could have forgiveness. And Lord, we struggle with this, but help us to bring that same life-giving, slavery-destroying power and love and forgiveness to the people in our lives. Help us to see in, in conflict and in issues and in horrible situations an opportunity for love and forgiveness to win the day. Lord, just give us the strength to do that in your Holy Spirit. That we might make the choice to 
to bring life. In Jesus' name.